Hello friends, in some of our previous lectures we have started with this topic called as derivatives. We have already covered all the basic concepts of derivatives and then we have also seen something called as derivatives of inverse trigonometric function. In our this session we are now going to start with the next concept of derivatives called as logarithmic differentiation. So students, I welcome you all to this channel Pankaj Lade. In our session, we are going to study all about logarithmic differentiation. So let's begin. Now students, if you remember, when I say logarithmic differentiation, it becomes a very mandatory condition that you should be knowing all the basic rules of logarithms. For instance, if you know log of a into b, we know it can be written as log of a plus log of b. Now remember the base, let us say it is m. In general, whenever we are talking about derivatives, in general, the base is always e. That means I can say that the base here is let us say taken as e. So whenever in calculus, if you are not writing any base, by default, the base is always taken as e. That means these all terms, if I do not write the base to the log, it is by default e. So that's the first formula that we already know of logarithms. The second formula I can take something like this, log of a upon b. So you see, now I'm not writing the base. It means that the base is by default taken as e. So log of a upon b, you know, it can be written as log of a minus log of b, isn't it? Then I can go further with the third formula and I can write the third formula something like this. It is log of, let us say, a raised to m. So there is a power to what? The power m is to a. It is not the power of entire log. You have to take care of that. So log of, it is a raised to m. So this will be written as m into log a again i am telling whenever i am not writing a base by default the base is always taken as e remember that any logarithmic term when you write it is always accompanied with a base there is no term of log without a base so this is log of a raised to m to the base e isn't it so the base is not written that means the base is taken as e so that's a formula of log of a raised to m i can go further and write the next formula something like this a very important formula the next formula is say log of a raised to some power m and look at this this is very important if i write log of a raised to m and the base is also Now the next formula is very important, the fourth one. The formula goes something like this. If I write a raised to log of any function, you can take f of x let us say, and this log also has base a. Try and understand the formula very properly. It is a very important formula. There is an exponential term. Now remember, when I say exponential term, it does not mean that it always has to be e raised to. It can be also a raised to. So I have an exponential term, a raised to, isn't it? So this a is the base, isn't it? This a is the base. Now the index of this a is log of f of x to the base a. So that's your index. This is your index. Okay, so the base is a and the index is log and this index log again has a base a. The index log, isn't it, has a base a. Now this result gives f of x. This is a very important formula. You have to know this formula very properly and very thoroughly. So I can extend this like e raised to log of x, isn't it? So now when I say log of x, it is by default taken as base e isn't it so this log has base e even if i don't write it it is understood that the base is e so the answer comes e raised to log to the base e a raised to log to the base a so a and a again got cancelled log was vanished so the answer simply came f of x so here also e raised to log of x so e and this base e will cancel and the log will vanish and will simply get the answer as what 
x so these are few of the very important rules of logarithms now there is usually some foolish mistakes made by students observe them when i write log of a plus b now many of the students get this an idea i don't know from where but they think that log of a plus b becomes equal to log a plus log b students this is absolutely wrong formula look at this log a plus log b is a result of what it is a result of log of a into b so whenever you have log a plus log b it is actually log of a into b so here when i say log of a plus b or even if i write for that case log of a minus b it is also not going to become equal to log of a minus log of b this is a very wrong uh, formula so remember this very properly that log of a plus b and log of a minus b does not have any kind of formula let's go ahead if i write log of a whole to the power m now do not be in an impression that log of a whole to the power m will become equal to m log a this formula is also absolutely wrong because m log a if you observe m log a that is a formula for what log of a raised to m isn't it so this is not log of a raised to m it is log of a whole to the power m so this term also does not have any kind of formula further if i write log of a into log of b this will definitely not become equal to log of a plus b or you can say log of a into b observe these are some silly mistakes which are usually made by students so remember this is log a and then there is another term log b so here if you observe this was log of a into b so that multiplication was inside the log itself so you cannot you cannot separate the terms like this log a into log b the answer is actually log a plus log b so here also log a into log b or log a upon log b these terms do not have any kind of formula this is also not equal to log of a minus b or log a minus log b is that right so people usually make or tend to make this this uh, foolish mistakes of confusing these formulas with the standard formula so make sure that you know your standard formulas very properly and very thoroughly these are few of the formulas that will be required while solving the logarithmic differentiation so now students i have i i hope that you have already noted down these all formulas very properly in your notebooks make sure that you are also writing down all the things in your notebook simultaneously so students now we'll be will be moving ahead with the uh, questions we will be uh, taking some uh, examples on logarithmic differentiation so i i i hope that you have already noted down please make sure that you note down these formulas so that when we go to the actual questions it will become very easy for you to understand logarithmic differentiation so students let's move ahead with some of the questions okay students now let's move on with some of the examples now before i begin with the example let's try and understand what basically logarithmic differentiation questions will look like now your problem will usually look like this y is equal to some function of x raised to some other function of x now try and understand usually we have terms like this we have a raised to x where a is the base which is a constant and raised to x which is a variable or we might have x raised to a here the base is a variable and the index is a constant look at the difference between the two exponential terms that i have written here a which is the base that is your uh, what you can say constant and then you have this x is a net you have this power x this is your index and that's a variable this is your variable is a net similarly when you say x raised to a so x is your base and that is your variable here this is the variable and a is your constant so these are two different types of exponential terms or i can say bases and indices isn't it here the base was constant the base was constant here and in the next case the base was a variable then in the previous case the index was a variable here the index is a constant but if you look at this type y is equal to some function of x that means it's a variable whenever i write something in x that is taken as a variable raised to some 
power of g of x now g of x is another term which is again a term of x that means here the base as well as the index both of them the base as well as the index both of them are variables isn't it both of them are variable so you have to be very careful when you take such kind of question so base and index both of them are variable so whenever you encounter such kind of a question where the base and the index both of them are powers of x or are terms of x when the base and the index both of them are terms of x you have to solve the question with some different technique now what that technique is observe carefully whenever such kind of question comes you should take log on both sides that means i'll write the term like this taking log on both sides now remember when i say taking log on both sides always and always have this point in your mind that logs are always with some base there is no logarithm without a base whenever i say a log there is always definitely some base involved and if i do not write anything about the base in by default in general the base will be taken as e so i am going to take base here as e so i write like this log of y is equal to log of f of x and this raised to g of x now students i hope you remember the basic properties the basic rules of logarithms we have just now seen if you look at this term it looks like log of a raised to m isn't it and log of a raised to m basically becomes m log a isn't it so this g of x will come down from the power so g of x comes down into log of f of x so there are two terms now g of x one of the term into log of f of x is one entire term log of f of x is one single term for me now so this is log of y is equal to g of x into log of f of x now if i ask you to differentiate both sides let's differentiate both sides with respect to x i'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x now try and understand this is log y it is not log x we know that the derivative of log x is 1 upon x isn't it derivative of log x is 1 upon x but if i ask you the derivative of log u where u is some function of x log u the derivative where u is some function of x becomes d by dx of log u you have to be very careful this is the concept of chain rule we have already seen what is chain rule some questions also we have taken isn't it so make sure that you have watched the previous lecture where i have already taken composite functions the chain rule so derivative of log u will be 1 upon u because u is not a constant it is a term of x so since this is a term of x the derivative of log u becomes 1 upon u into again du by dx so just i am renaming the term now here instead of u now i have given you log y remember that y is also function of x isn't it it has lot of terms which are of x y is equal to f of x raised to g of x f of x also contains terms of x g of x also contains terms of x that means y is actually a term of x only so when i ask you to get the derivative of log y it is going to be 1 upon y isn't it log x derivative is 1 upon x so log y derivative is 1 upon y and dy by dx that is equal to now on the right hand side if you observe you are going to differentiate so this g of x is one term for me isn't it g of x is one of the term and the entire log of f of x is another term so there is g of x and then there is log of f of x so i'll be writing like this the derivative i'm going to make use of the u into v rule so according to the u into v rule the answer is going to come like this so log of f of x as it is isn't it we take v as it is and the derivative of the first term so derivative of the first term will be g1 of x isn't it so function of x if i have y is equal to f of x if i have then dy by dx is given as f1 of x so likewise here so g of x derivative will become g1 of x then plus u as it is isn't it so what we have done was v as it is and we have taken derivative of u now u as it is so i would write g of x as it is and the derivative of log of f of x so derivative of log of f of x now what is derivative of log x it is 1 upon x so derivative of log x if i know it's 1 upon x 
derivative of log of f of x will become 1 upon f of x into again the derivative of f of x. It is again chain rule, isn't it? Log u, log x, derivative of log x is 1 upon x. Then derivative of log u will become 1 upon u du by dx. So derivative of log f of x becomes 1 upon f of x, derivative of f of x. And we know that derivative of f of x is f1 of x. So into I write f1 of x. So, so that's your answer of 1 upon y dy by dx. Now try and understand this. You want to get the value of what? You want to get the derivative of dy by dx. Isn't it? You want to get the answer of dy by dx. What is different here is 1 upon y, the extra term. So what you should be doing? You should be transferring this 1 upon y on the right hand side. So my final answer comes out to be dy by dx is equal to, so y transfers on the other hand side, so you can write y into log of f of x, one of the terms, into g1 of x, which is the first derivative of g of x, plus g of x into f1 of x upon f of x and you know that the value of y was f of x raised to g of x. You can simply replace y with what? f of x raised to g of x. So that gives you the answer of dy by dx. So this is the entire process of logarithmic differentiation. Now students, once this entire session is over, I will be also explaining you one shortcut technique of getting logarithmic differentiation. Make sure after watching this entire lecture, you will go and watch the shortcut technique also because our prime target is to take questions in a very short way, isn't it? There should be some very uh, 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 simple way of getting these complex answers because we have to target on our JWs and the CETs, isn't it? So there must be some kind of a shortcut technique available for logarithmic differentiation. What that shortcut technique is, I'll definitely be explaining in my next lecture. So at this moment, this is what logarithmic differentiation is to be done if it has to be done in the conventional way, isn't it? Now, once we have understood the concept, we are ready for some of the examples. So students, let's take some examples now. Students, let's begin with some of the questions. I have written some questions on the board. I'm going to solve each of them. So make sure that you are very attentive and simultaneously as you're watching the lecture, you are also noting down the solutions. Now, the first question is the most important question of all, even though it looks a very small problem. Y is equal to X raised to X. Now, whatever solution I'm going to teach you here, make sure that you memorize it as a formula. So whenever Y equal to X raised to X comes, whenever Y equal to X raised to X comes, make sure that you quickly know your answer. So this is going to help you out when you solve questions on JW and CET. So Y equal to X raised to X. Let's begin with a simple problem. We have to get the differentiation of Y equal to X raised to X. So I'm write my question. So y is equal to x raised to x. Do I find that the base and the index, both of them are terms of x. The base and the index, isn't it? x is the base raised to x is the index. So base and the index are both functions of x. This cannot be differentiated in the conventional way, isn't it? We have to make use of logarithmic differentiation. So this point must always be remembered that whenever the base and the index, both of them are functions of x, you should always make use of the logarithmic differentiation. Now let's try and understand how to get the solution for this one. So the standard technique that we have already seen, isn't it? We have already seen how the problem has to be solved. So we are going to take logs on both hand sides at the beginning. So let's take log on both sides, isn't it? When I say take log on both sides, I basically mean take logarithms to the base e. I have to take the logs to the base e. If I do not write any base, by default the base will be taken as e. So I'm going to take log here on both sides and obviously the log has base e. So I'll be getting log y is equal to log of x raised to x, isn't it? Log of x raised to x. Now we know that log of a raised to m, we know log of a raised to m is simply m into log a, isn't it? We already know this property of logarithms. So this power x will come down 
So I'll write here x into log x. So you got to understand that x is one of the term for us and the other term has become log x, isn't it? So x is one term, log x is the other term. Now if I want to differentiate both sides with respect to x, differentiate both sides with respect to x, I will be getting, so what could be derivative of log y? We know that the derivative of log x is 1 upon x, isn't it? Derivative of log x we know is 1 upon x. So derivative of log y should become 1 upon y because y is also what? y is not a constant. It is a function of x, isn't it? Lot of x are present over here. So y is a term of x. So we know that log u derivative is log u. The derivative is 1 upon u into the derivative of u. du by dx we say because u is a function of x. This is our composite function or the chain rule we can say. So likewise the derivative of log y is going to be 1 upon y because log x derivative is 1 upon x but this is not x this is y so again derivative of y I'll write dy upon dx now students you have to know this uh, formula this technique of getting the differentiation of log y very thoroughly because in the next question I'm going to write, directly write the derivative of log y isn't it so that explanation is already taken care here so derivative comes 1 upon y dy by dx and now if on the right hand side if I observe there is x and then there is log x that means there is u and then there is v so I need to make use of the u into v rule and what is the u into v rule we know the u into v rule states us that you keep v as it is that means you keep log x as it is and then you differentiate the first term which is x here so you know the derivative of x is going to be 1 now we have seen lot of lectures on derivatives you are already aware of all the formulas of derivatives isn't it so make sure that you have already watched my previous sessions on derivatives so derivative of x we know it is 1 so I write 1 and then plus you keep v as it is that means I'll keep x as it is isn't it and derivative of the next term which is log x Derivative of log x, we know it is 1 upon x. So what happens here, the x and x will get cancelled. So x and x gets cancelled, we get only 1. Log x into 1 is only log x, so it is log x plus 1. Or you better say 1 plus log x. I have just uh, shifted the terms around, isn't it? So log x plus 1, I have simply written it as 1 plus log x. We know a plus b and b plus a, both of them are same only. So that's the answer of what? That's the answer of 1 upon y dy by dx. And I want the answer of dy by dx. So from here, I can say that the value of dy by dx comes equal to y multiplies on the other hand side, you get y into 1 plus log x and you all know that the value of y is x raised to x. That is why my answer comes x raised to x into 1 plus log x. So students, you have to remember the formula or the uh, solution of y is equal to x raised to x, the derivative. As you know your name, isn't it? If someone comes and asks you what is your name, you quickly tell the answer. You quickly tell the, your name what it is. So similarly, whenever now ahead, if I ask you what is the derivative of y equal to x raised to x, make sure that you quickly tell me the answer as x raised to x into 1 plus log x. So this one point has to be always remembered that the derivative of x raised to x is x raised to x into 1 plus log x. Students make sure that you note down the solution very quickly. So we'll be now moving with the next question. So students now let's move on with the next question. Our next question is y is equal to tan x raised to sin x. So again if you observe the base is a function of x. Now it is a slightly complex question isn't it compared to x raised to x. So the base is tan x which is a term of x. And the index is also a term of x. It is given to us as sin x. So again, we are going to make use of the conventional way of getting the derivative. The base and the index, both of them are functions of x. So I will be needing here the logarithmic differentiation, isn't it? I'll need here to use logarithmic differentiation to get the answer of this y equal to tan x raised to sin x. So students, let's again take log on both sides. Isn't it? We all know. We can take log on both sides. So let's take log on both sides. And now I guess you have pretty well understood that whenever I say log, it is always with some base and the base by default is taken as E. So I have Y is equal to tan X raised to sin X. I'm taking log on both sides. So I get log Y is equal to log of tan X raised to sin x. Now students you already remember the formula log of a raised to m isn't it? Log of a raised to m will give us m log a. So the answer comes here sin x into 
log of tan x, isn't it? Sin x into log of tan x. So sin x is one term for us. Sin x becomes one term for us. This is one of the term for us. And the entire log of tan x is another term for us. So this is like u and this is v. So I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. Let's differentiate both sides with respect to x. So now if I differentiate both sides with respect to x, I will be getting. So what's the derivative of log y? Now I guess you pretty well know what is the derivative of log y. We have taken few questions on logarithmic differentiation, isn't it? We have seen x raised to x, we have seen the basic concept, the conventional way of getting the derivative. So at, at this moment, you should be now pretty well versed with what is the derivative of log y. So the answer is going to be 1 upon y dy by dx. I hope it is now okay for me to write the derivative formula directly for log y. So it's 1 upon y dy by dx. On the right hand side, I can see there is u into v. So I need to make use of the u into v rule, which states that v should be kept as it is and differentiate u. So v is log of tan x. So I write log of tan x as it is. And we should differentiate the first function. First function is sin x. So what is the derivative of sin x students? You remember what is the derivative of sin x? It is Yes, absolutely correct. It is cos x. So I write cos x here. So that was v as it is and derivative of u. Then I write plus sign. So I write plus sign. Then u as it is and derivative of the second function. So I write sin x as it is. And so I want to get derivative of what? The second function which is log of tan x. So what is the derivative of log of tan x going to be? Derivative of log of tan x is like derivative of log of x. And we know that derivative of log of x is 1 upon x. But this is not x, it is tan x. That means I will again have to differentiate tan x. So my answer is going to be 1 upon tan x into again the derivative of tan x. You have to be very strong with the knowledge of composite functions. Please watch the previous lectures on composite functions, all of them. So I can write derivative of log of tan x. It is 1 upon tan x. Again derivative of tan x, which is we know sec square x isn't it? it is sec square x so if you want you can simplify a little bit so i can write here i can write here cos x into log of tan x now students it is up to you whether you want to simplify it or not you can simplify a little bit do you know that tan is nothing but sine upon cos isn't it it is sine upon cos cos can go up or you can say it is one upon tan is like cot so i can write sine x into 1 upon tan was cortex and we know cortex is cos x upon sin x isn't it cos x upon sin x and then there is x square x so x square x I can write 1 upon cos square x if I want isn't it 1 upon cos square x or you can keep x square x as it is x square x as it is so sine and sine cancels isn't it sine and sine cancels and you know that sec x is 1 upon cos x so one cos will get cancelled isn't it from sec square x, I can utilize one of the sec to cancel this cos x and one sec x will be left. So my ultimate answer is cos x into log of tan x and then plus I can write sec x here, isn't it? Cos and one of the sec has cancelled, only sec x is left. But try and understand whatever answer you have got is the answer for what? It is the answer of 1 upon y dy by dx. So what could be the answer of dy by dx? The answer for dy by dx comes out to be this y multiplies on the right hand side. So y into the entire answer that you have, isn't it? This entire answer that you have will come in this place. So y into this entire answer. But you know already what is the value of y? So y was tan x raised to sin x. That means the final answer can be written as, so y is tan x raised to sin x. So you write tan x raised to sin x. And then put a bracket and rest of the answer which is cos x log tan x. So write cos x into log tan x and plus there is sec x. So I write plus sec x, isn't it? So even though the question looks a little bit complex, but if you know the standard way of getting the answer, you can definitely get the answer for the entire question, isn't it? So this is how the problem was solved. Note down this question very properly in your notebooks. We will now move on to the next question. So students, now let's move on to the next question. We have y is equal to x cubed tan raised to 5x upon tan 4x. Now this question again 
doesn't look like logarithmic differentiation, isn't it? X raised to X or tan X raised to sin X. That means the base and the index. Both of them are functions of X in logarithmic differentiation. That is how we identify a question on logarithmic differentiation. Here, that is not a case, isn't it? Here, the problem is X cube into tan raised to 5X upon tan 4X. So, at the very first sight, we might not realize that the question can be solved in a much more effective way if we make use of logarithms. Now the reason I am telling this is if I make use of logarithms the problem will become more easier because at this moment if I try to differentiate first of all I will need to make use of the u upon v rule isn't it that is a very complex rule u upon v rule v as it is derivative of u minus u as it is derivative of v whole divided by v square again if you observe you check u u is x cube into tan raised to 5x again i need to make use of the u into v rule so the problem becomes too much complex if i keep the question the given as it is it is given isn't it so here what we will do is we will take we'll take the help of logarithms to evaluate such kind of questions whenever there are plenty of terms involved which include multiplication and division see the problem includes multiplication and division and some powers so it is always beneficial to make use of the logarithms to solve such kind of questions so students what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take log on both sides initially let's take log on both sides take log on both sides so i get log y is equal to I write log of x cube into tan raised to 5x upon tan 4x that is what I have isn't it now if you observe inside the log inside the log there is this numerator this numerator so I can call it as a isn't it and then there is a denominator so I can call it as b so this looks like log of a upon b and we very well know that log of a upon b is what log a minus log b so I can write here the terms like this log of a so for me the a is what x cube into tan raised to 5x so that's log of a minus log of b so I write minus log of tan 4x isn't it now let's focus on the first term again in the first term if you try to observe log of there is x cube isn't it and then there is tan raised to 5x there are two terms I can call them as log of a into b so what is log of a into b absolutely correct you know the formula log of a into b is log a plus log b so I'll write here log a which is log of x cube plus log of b which is log of tan raised to 5x isn't it so tan x raised to 5 I'll write tan x raised to 5 and the next term is minus of log of tan 4x isn't it now one more property I'm going to make use of here for the logarithms I know that log of a raised to m log of a raised to m isn't it here also log of a raised to m so we know that log of a raised to m is m log a that means I can proceed further with this term as 3 log x isn't it 3 log x the power 3 has come down here the power 5 will also come down plus 5 log of tan x isn't it plus 5 log of tan x and one more term is present log of tan 4x we know it was log of tan 4x so this is the entire answer for what it is the entire answer for log of y so log of y is this very big answer what i can do here is now i'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x i'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to x so i get what is derivative of log y so derivative of log y is 1 upon y dy by dx we all now know the formula of derivative of log y it is 1 upon y dy by dx now if i observe there is one term plus two term and minus the third term isn't it first plus second minus third so we know if you have u plus v or u minus v and if you want to take differentiation so it's derivative of the first term plus and minus derivative of the second term so i can write here derivative of the first term that means you focus entirely on 3 log x you can observe that there is 3 is a constant then log x is there so derivative is going to be 3 into 1 upon x then plus let's move to the next term you have 5 constants so keep 5 aside then you have log of tan x 
you know that the derivative of log of x is 1 upon x but this is not log of x it is log of tan x that means it's a composite function i will need to make use of the chain rule so log of tan x the derivative is going to be 1 upon tan x because derivative of log x is 1 upon x so i write 1 upon tan x but it is not x again i have to differentiate the uh, tan x isn't it so we have here derivative of tan x which is sec square x and finally we have log of tan 4x so be very careful here so i'm going to put a minus sign here so let's put a negative sign minus sign and log of tan 4x so what is derivative of log of x it is 1 upon x this is what log of tan 4x so i'll get derivative as 1 upon tan 4x into again derivative of tan 4x isn't it you have to be very careful derivative of tan 4x what is derivative of tan x it is x square x is it tan x no it is tan 4x so derivative is going to be sec square 4x into again derivative of 4x so i write sec square 4x isn't it and again derivative of 4x 4x becomes 4 constant derivative of x is 1 so that is how the derivative is going to be looking like so finally if i want to write the answer for dy by dx i know what is y here isn't it there's a very big term here y is equal to x cubed tan raised to 5x upon tan 4x so 1 upon y dy by dx this is the answer this very big term that we have got is the answer so here i can say dy by dx becomes equal to so this one upon y goes and multiplies on the other hand side and what is the value of y value of y is this x cube into y and so on so i'll write here x cube into tan raised to 5x into tan raised to 5x whole divided by tan 4x so i write tan 4x here and then i put a bracket because this entire answer is multiplied with y and this was the value of y this very big term and then you write the entire answer so what's the answer finally you can say it is 3 upon x the first term then the second term is plus 5 upon tan x and sec square x if possible you can simplify this you know that sec square can be written as 1 upon cos square isn't it 1 upon cos square tan is sine upon cos tan is sine upon cos one of the cos cancels understand the things very properly again sec square is 1 upon cos square tan is sine upon cos so one of the cos cancels you get sine into cos so i can write 5 upon sin x into cos x and then the last term is minus of minus of again here also there is x square 4x so can be written as 1 upon cos square 4x isn't it 1 upon cos square 4x so one of the cos again cancels understand the terminology is very properly the formulas that i'm using over here so again i get minus of 4 upon sin 4x into cos 4x isn't it so that is how the entire answer will look like you can again go ahead you can multiply and divide by 2 also here if you multiply and divide by 2 you get 2 sin x into cos x you know that 2 sin x cos x is sin 2x so i can add sin 2x here by multiplying and dividing by 2 i can do the same thing here also multiply and divide by 2 so the numerator becomes 8 and the denominator becomes 2 sin 4x into cos 4x that becomes sin 8x so it depends what kind of an answer is asked you can every time modify the answers according to the need so this is how the problem is solved for y equal to x cube tan raised to 5x upon tan 4x even though the question was not visible at the first sight like the logarithmic differentiation but it involved lot many terms with multiplication and division so from there we can identify that logarithmic differentiation can be a more effective way of solving this particular question so students you note down the solution we will now move on to the next question so students now let's move on to the next question our next question is y is equal to square root of 2x plus 3 to the power 5 3x minus 1 whole cube and 5x minus 2 now again if i try to make use of the standard way of getting the derivatives don't you think it is going to be too much complex isn't it there is a square root sign the derivative of square root is going to be 1 upon 2 root whatever is present inside it is not x again i have to differentiate that term so again i have to go and differentiate this particular term which is like u upon v rule so u upon v rule again very complex and if you observe v also contains product of two terms so again there you have to make use of u into v rule so it is going to be too much complex to get this kind of a problem the solution for this kind of a problem is it so such kind of questions can be easily tackled by taking the help of logarithmic differentiation 
how can we identify if you observe here there is a division there is a multiplication of terms isn't it so this is a very clear indication that instead of using the standard way of getting the derivatives it becomes sense to make use of the logarithmic differentiation so students i'm going to make use of logarithmic differentiation here obviously we know the process we take logs on both end sides isn't it now do you know that this square root sign actually can be written as raised to half so that square root sign i have transformed it into raised to half and now if i take logs on both end sides let's take log on both sides so whenever i say take log on both sides i always mean take log on both sides with the base e every log is always with a base so take log on both sides so i get log of y is equal to log of this entire term which is 2x plus 3 to the power 5 upon 3x minus 1 the whole cube and 5x minus 2 that's my question and this entire term raised to 1 upon 2 so it looks like log of a raised to m and what is log of a raised to m log of a raised to m is m log a so i can write here 1 by 2 and log of 2x plus 3 raised to 5 upon 3x minus 1 the whole cube and 5x minus 2 isn't it so that is now the that has now become the simplified form now if you observe here again this is like log of observe carefully this is your numerator it can be called as log of a and the denominator it can be called as b so that's like log of a upon b and what is log of a upon b log of a upon b can be written as log a minus log b now be very careful the half is multiplied with the entire term of log so whatever log simplifies to whatever log is going to get simplified to 1 upon 2 will multiply with the entire simplified form so i get 1 upon 2 and this is going to be i'm going to put a bracket then i write log the numerator which is 2x plus 3 raised to 5 then you put a minus sign and then you write log of the denominator which is 3x minus 1 the whole cube into 5x minus 2 and you close the bracket this entire bracket is for the 1 by 2 now if you observe the first term it looks like log of a raised to m isn't it log of a raised to m and we all know that log of a raised to m can be written as m log a so this becomes equal to 1 upon 2 then you start a bracket 5 comes down and log of 2x plus 3 now for the next term you have to be very careful look at the next term it has a minus sign a negative sign students negative sign is a very 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 dangerous sign you have to be extra careful when the negative sign comes so now try and understand there is a negative sign and this term log of 3x minus 1 cube and 5x minus 2 this is log of a into b log of a into b is going to be log a plus log b isn't it log of a into b is going to be log a plus log b but there is a negative sign outside so this negative sign will transform or will change the sign of the terms which are going to come ahead so log a plus log b now becomes because of the minus sign minus log a minus log b so i write minus log of 3x minus 1 the whole cube and then minus log of 5x minus 2 and then close the bracket for the half so be very careful with these terms log of a into b was going to give me the answer as log a plus log b but because of the negative sign prior to this term the signs are going to change ahead of the negative sign so that becomes minus and minus and obviously now you know that this 3 can be brought down so the ultimate answer looks like 1 by 2 5 log of 2x plus 3 minus 3 times of log of 3x minus 1 and then minus of log of 5x minus 2 isn't it so students now i guess you have understood the entire solution so far now this is the simplified form of log y try and understand this is not the answer of y it is the answer of log y this is the simplified form isn't it now if i try to differentiate this don't you think that it is going to be far more easier than the original question so now if i ask you to get the derivative what could be derivative of log y very good you have now known the answer the derivative of log y is going to be 1 upon y dy by dx so you write 1 upon y dy by dx and when you come to the right hand side 
and you start differentiating the first thing that you see is 1 upon 2 obviously it is going to be a constant so that becomes a constant let's not worry about it let's worry about all the terms present inside the bracket so when you start moving inside the bracket there are three terms inside the bracket attached with each other with the negative sign so it is like u minus v or u plus v rule so the derivative is going to be derivative of first term plus derivative of second term minus the derivative of the third term what are the signs are there and we take care of those signs. So the first term if I now observe this is 5 log of 2x plus 3. Now students you have seen so many questions on composite functions that you must pretty well know the answers directly over here isn't it. So the answers are going to be what is the derivative of log of 2x plus 3. Absolutely correct. The answer has come to your mind. The answer is 1 upon 2x plus 3 and again derivative of 2x plus 3. And same thing happens with the next two terms also. So students, what I have done here is I have simplified this particular term, isn't it? So I am going to write the answer directly. I am going to write the answer directly over here. Make sure that you will complete all the steps in between. I want you all to uh, uh, be very strong, be very, uh, what you can say, tidy with all the steps. So make sure you also practice some questions on your own. So I am going to leave few of the steps here. I am going to write the answer directly. Make sure that you take take care of all the steps after this and get your final answer I'm writing the answer for you so the answer is going to be looking like this I'm going to write the answer for you you should cross check your answers when you complete the entire solution so students the answer is going to be looking like this dy by dx becomes equal to I'm going to get a y we know what is the value of y it is this root of so I write root of 2x plus 3 raised to 5 upon 3x minus 1 the whole cube into 5x minus 2 isn't it so that's y into the derivative of this entire thing which is 1 by 2 outside here so I can write 1 by 2 at the beginning here 1 by 2 isn't it and then the derivative of all these terms so it is 5 upon 2x plus 3 into again derivative of 2x plus 3 so that's going to be 2 so my final answer becomes 10 here next term is minus of 3 upon derivative is going to be 1 upon 3x minus 1 students I am writing the answer directly I want you to complete all the steps and once you complete all the steps you can cross check your answer over here so that is the reason I'm writing the answer directly here and again derivative of 3x minus 1 so that's going to be 3 so the answer becomes 9 here and finally the derivative is going to become for the last term minus of 5 upon 5x minus 2 so this is how your entire answer is going to look for the fourth question so students make sure that you complete the steps in between over here to reach the final answer note down the solution very properly understand all the steps very carefully we will now move on to the next two questions which are very important questions so students now let's move on to the next two questions which are left one of them is y is equal to sin x is to tan x plus cos x is to sec x now there is slight difference in this problem and the previous question that we have solved now most of the times what i observe a silly mistake that has been made by the student is whenever they get a function raised to some other function isn't it a function of x raised to some other function of x they blindly start putting log on both the sides now try and understand the question that is given to us is y is equal to sin x to tan x and then there is a very important sign present in between there is a plus sign in between so this is actually i can call this term as a and the next term as say b so it is actually like y is equal to a plus B. and students now if you want to take log on both sides suppose if you take log on both sides so this will look like log y is equal to log of a plus b now tell me what is the formula for log of a plus b so is a formula coming to your mind log of a plus b is equal to log a plus log b if this has come to your mind students you also had made the same mistake that has been in general made by many of the students log of a plus b has no formula available this is a very important point to be noted log of a plus b has no formula available if you remember the formula list that i gave at the beginning of this session was log a into b 
that becomes log a plus log b log a plus b as such has no formula available so this is what a general mistake is made by a student what he does is he takes log on both end sides directly you get log a plus uh, b and he blindly writes it's log a plus log b so students i want you to avoid this stupid mistake ever isn't it so this should not happen with you so remember that log of a plus b has absolutely no formula available so to tackle this problem what i'm going to do here is i'm going to call the first term as u and the second term as v so it is like y is equal to u plus v so now if i ask you to differentiate both sides with respect to x i will be getting dy by dx is equal to du by dx and then plus dv upon dx so that's a formula for uh, the first step is it that's the first step that y is equal to u plus v then you get dy by dx is equal to du by dx plus dv by dx so that means now i separately want to get the value of du by dx and the value of dv by dx now let's take the two terms separately and get their answers so students we have u is equal to sin x raised to tan x isn't it it is sin x raised to tan x and then v is given to us cos x raised to sec x so we are going to get the derivatives of u and v separately so what i'll do here is now i take log on both sides now let's take log on both sides as we all know that this log will have the base e so i get log u is equal to log of sin x raised to tan x isn't it now log of a raised to m we all know it is going to be m log a so tan x into log of sin x is what i will be getting so that's log u now if i differentiate both sides so let's differentiate both sides with respect to x i will be getting so students can you tell me the derivative of log u now absolutely correct the formula the the step has come to your mind log u the derivative is going to be 1 upon u and du by dx isn't it and on the right hand side students i will need to make use of the u into v rule there is tan x and then there is log of sin x so i will be using the u into v rule to get the derivative of the right hand side which tells me take v as it is so you keep log of sin x as it is and you differentiate tan x so do you remember the formula of uh, uh, tan x the derivative of tan x yes the answer is sec square x so i write sec square x then plus sin then you take tan x as it is tan x as it is and students now i need to get the derivative of what log of sin x we know that the derivative of log x is 1 upon x this is log of sin x so derivative is going to be 1 upon sin x and again i will take the derivative of sin x by using the concept of composite function or we say the chain rule so log of sin x derivative is 1 upon sin x is it and again derivative of sin x so the derivative of sin x is going to be cos x now students do you observe that cos upon sin we all know cos upon sin is cot tan into cot is 1 is it cos upon sin was cot and tan into cot is going to be 1 so my answer for du by dx is going to be now see i am getting the answer for du by dx up to this step my left hand side was 1 upon u du by dx now i need to get the derivative of u so du by dx is my term that i want to find so du by dx becomes equal to send the u on the other hand side and what is u u is sin x raised to tan x so i write here sin x raised to tan x then put a bracket isn't it and then i write log of sin x into sec square x so sec square x into log of sin x i write and then i write plus this is going to become 1 so let's write plus 1 here and close the bracket i'm going to call this as first relation so this is all the derivative of the first part sin x raised to tan x now students let's move on with the second part where v is equal to cos x raised to sec x again what we will do again we will take log on both sides so let, let's take log on both sides so here also i am going to take log on both sides so take log on both sides again here also the log is to the base e 
So I'll be getting here log v is equal to sec comes down. So I write sec x and log of cos x. Is it sec x into log of cos x? So again, if I differentiate both sides with respect to x, differentiate both sides with respect to x. Now you are pretty well understood how the steps are advancing, isn't it? You are now very comfortable with all of the steps that I put right here. So log v derivative is going to be 1 upon v dv upon dx. That is equal to, again you will do v rule is needed. So sec x as it is or I better say, first we take log of cos x as it is and derivative of sec x. We know that the derivative of sec x is sec x into tan x. So I write sec x into tan x, isn't it? So that was v as it is derivative of u. Then you put a plus sign and write sec x as it is. So let's write sec x as it is. Derivative of log of cos x. So it is again like log of x and derivative of log of x is 1 upon x. But this is not log x, this is log of cos x. So I write 1 upon cos x and again the derivative of cos x which is going to become minus sin x. You have to know the formulas very well. So that's minus sin x. So I can say this is going to be, we all know that sin upon cos is going to be what? Tan, isn't it? Sin upon cos, we all know it is tan. This is sec x into tan x then. So can I say sec x into tan x, this term can be taken out common from the two terms. Did you observe carefully? Sin upon cos is tan and the negative sign goes in between here. So that becomes minus of sec x and tan x. The first term also contains sec x and tan x, isn't it? So I can take out this sec x into tan x common from the two terms. What is left inside with the first term is log of cos x. So I write log of cos x and then with the second term, I am just left with minus 1. That's 1 upon v dv by dx, the value, isn't it? So what is the value of dv by dx? So dv upon dx becomes equal to, you know, 1 upon v transfers on the other hand side, it becomes v into this entire term. And what is the value of v? We knew that v is given by cos x raised to sec x. So I write here cos x raised to sec x into this entire answer which is sec x into tan x into log of cos x minus 1. Now the problem might look very lengthy but if you rely on your basic concepts, the basic things that you have learned uh, how to tackle the question then it becomes quite easy. So the size is not going to matter students. We should just remember the basic concepts very properly. So finally I'm going to get my answer. I'm going to call this equation as my first equation or I can call this as say equation number A, isn't it? So this I've got the derivative du by dx first equation. I've got the derivative dv by dx, that's the second equation. So I can take first and second and I can simply substitute in equation number A because my question was to get the derivative of y which is dy by dx which was du by dx comes from equation 1 plus dv by dx comes from equation 2. So this is how the problem has to be solved. It is absolutely not challenging. At the, at the beginning it might look challenging. At the beginning there might be a silly mistake that might be made by a student. But then now you know what has to be avoided. What care has to be taken while solving such kind of a question. So students note down the solution. I am leaving the last step for you to take the equations 1 and 2 and substitute in equation A. We will take one more question on logarithmic differentiation and then we will conclude this session. So students now let's move on to our last question of the discussion of logarithmic differentiation. After this question our session for logarithmic differentiation will end. So let's very quickly understand what the last question is given to us. It is more or less similar to the previous question that we have discussed, isn't it? Y is equal to we have sin inverse of x raised to x and x raised to cos inverse of x and they are both combined with a plus sign in between. Now you got to understand again, I cannot take log on both hand sides directly because we know this actually looks like log of a plus b and log of a plus b as such has no formula available. Log of a plus b has no formula available. So I'm going to call this as again u and this is v and if I want to get dy by dx it is simply going to be du by dx and then dv upon dx. So let's get du by dx and dv upon dx separately. So at the beginning you have u is equal to sin inverse of x raised to x u is equal to sin inverse of x 
raised to x. Now you must have pretty well understood that you have to take log at this moment, isn't it? The base as well as the index, both of them are functions of x. So I'm going to take log on both sides. So I get log u is equal to x into log of sine inverse of x. Isn't it students now you guess I guess you you have understood what the steps are going to look like isn't it so I'm not explaining in much more detail now you are all pretty smart now with all the steps so now let's differentiate both sides so derivative of log u is going to be 1 upon u and du by dx you will be needing to make use of the u into v rule which will give me x as it is derivative of log it is 1 upon isn't it but it is not x it is sine inverse of x so I write 1 upon sine inverse of x and again the derivative of sine inverse of x it is going to be 1 upon root of 1 minus x square make sure that you have watched my lectures on derivatives of inverse trigonometric functions over there I have already discussed what are the derivatives of inverse functions so the derivative of sine inverse of x we knew it was 1 upon root of 1 minus x square then a plus sign will come isn't it and then log of sine inverse of x as it is log of sine inverse of x as it is and the derivative of x is going to be 1 so that's answer of 1 upon u du by dx so the answer for du upon dx simply becomes equal to the 1 upon u transfers on the other hand side becomes u into this entire term what is u it is sine inverse of x raised to x so I write sine inverse of x raised to x then I put a bracket and write this answer which is x upon sin inverse of x into root of 1 minus x square and then plus what is left ahead is log of sin inverse of x so I'll write it down here plus log of sin inverse of x and you close the bracket so that is the answer of derivative of u so I'm going to call this as equation 1 let's quickly move on to the second part where we have v is equal to v is equal to x raised to cos inverse of x so again we take log on both sides we get log v so I'm not writing all the decorative steps now I guess you all know what has to be written in between here isn't it so let's very quickly get the solution so take log on both sides we get log v is equal to take log on the other side as well looks like log of a raised to m m comes down so that's cos inverse of x into log of x differentiate both sides so derivative of log v is 1 upon v dv upon dx so u will do v rule I need to apply so I write cos inverse of x here derivative of log x is going to be 1 upon x and then write a plus sign then again log x as it is log x as it is derivative of cos inverse of x we all remember it is negative 1 upon root of 1 minus x square so I write minus 1 upon root of 1 minus x square and close the bracket so my final answer will look like dv upon dx becomes equal to this one upon v will transfer on the other hand side v is x raised to cos inverse of x so i write here x raised to cos inverse of x and put the bracket inside the bracket i'm going to get the answer cos inverse of x upon x and then plus this entire answer but then there is a negative sign here so the plus in between becomes negative and i write log x upon root of 1 minus x square I'm going to call this as equation number 2 and what we do we take equation 1 and 2 and we put it back in our equation number A let us say so I'm going to call this as equation A so I'm going to leave this step for you because I guess you are pretty smart enough to understand what has to be written at the end so students I guess this entire session, this entire long session that you have seen on logarithmic differentiation I hope that you have understood the things very well, isn't it? Now what is needed is, I have taken only few questions, I have taken only 5-6 questions here in this session but then I want you to practice as much as questions as you can on logarithmic differentiation I have done my best to cover all the different types that were needed to understand logarithmic differentiation in great detail. Now what, what is left is, it is up to you how you take this session and then go ahead with more and more questions. So students, I would wish you very best to practice as many questions as you can. Make sure that you keep on practicing the things very properly and very thoroughly. 
we will meet in our next session where we will be taking some more concepts on derivatives so students i'm going to leave you here i thank you all for watching this video you all have a very great day ahead